All right, uh, can you guys hear me well? At the back? Okay, great. So let's start. A short introduction about myself. My name is Ryan, and I'm a front-end developer at Team Spirit. So I've been asked by my PR to speak a bit about my company. So here it is. Um, Team Spirit is a Japanese company. We produce enterprise resource planning, ERP software, and we have a suite of applications that involve modules like resource management, project management, and time and expense management. So here's a lovely photo of me and my colleagues. We're not doing the Ultraman. This is uh, supposed to be T in the team spirit. Right, with that in mind, let's talk about topic. Uh, first of all, thank you to Huijing and Microsoft Singapore for sponsoring this event. Uh, when I was when I agreed to this event, I was very excited, but I also feel regret because I'm not sure what topic to talk about. So I was thinking, maybe you talk about the web design trends of 2020, or even top CSS framework for web development. But maybe it'd be a bit cliche, because chances are you would already find all these materials in YouTube and also a lot of blogs. So instead, I thought, what if I share about my interests? So this is one of my interests. Meme. <laughs> um, memes are really the primary means of communication between me and my colleagues. So anyone who ever use CSS to do stuff, chances are you would feel like a family guy meme over there. Like especially before the implementation of flex and grid, how hard is, is it to support i6 using table vertically centered stuff. <laughs> see, see some, some developers obviously have experience with that. And this is what it's like to work in CSS. Now, my second interest is beautiful UI and UX. I like apps that are intuitive and beautiful because it makes me feel good using them. And then last but not least, I like psychology. I like the study of human behavior and how applying psychology to your product design will actually make your product more intuitive and the user experience much better. So with that in mind, I want to share these three interests of mine in today's topic, which is web design in different cultures. For starters, this will be the agenda of the day. Um, first, we'll talk about culture and what is it important, and the difference between website design in the West and the East. As this is a rather big topic, I'll just scope it to just US versus China and Japan, especially Japan, because that's uh, where my co company of origin is from. And then we share about the reasons why they are different, and we'll end with a key takeaways that will hopefully help you to improve in making a better product. So let's start about culture. This image here is a cultural map, and it's published by a professor named Aaron Mayer for Harvard Business Review. So what it is, is it grades nationality on two axes, confrontation and emotional expression. If you look to the top left, US ranks is slightly confrontational and slightly emotionally expressive. And Russia is very high end. So if you meet a Russia guy, just don't make jokes about their nation. It might just kill you. And then on the lower end, if you look at the bottom right, there'll be Japan. Basically what this chart shows is Japan is emotionally unexpressive and avoids confrontation. And I can tell you from experience, this is so true. This is important. Why is this important? This is important because culture shapes your experience. And anyone who designs website and make products, right, will also be influenced by the culture. So why is culture important? According to this book, International User Interface, um, the authors who wrote this, Alisa Delgado and Jacob Nelson, they said it is no longer enough to simply offer a product translated in 10 to 20 different languages. Users also want a product that acknowledges their unique cultural characteristics and business practices. What this means for you is, if you're a marketer, if you want to drive engagement, and if you want users to retain their attention when using a product, you need to localize and internationalize your product to suit their unique cultural characteristics. The better you can do this, the better the engagement will be, and the better the conversion rate will be, which translates to better bottom line, and hopefully better mm -hmm. salary for all of us. Now, Diane Sear, associate professor at Simon Fraser, says that culture affects everything. It affects internet usage, 
It affects how much you trust online purchases and most importantly, website development. If you think about it, it makes sense because designers and developers are people and people are affected by culture influences. I'll come back to this slide again uh, in the later slides, but let's start now. So on the left is the most visited sites in USA, whereas on the right, okay, my right, it's the most visited sites in China. To the left, a uh, website that I'm sure you guys are familiar with and probably frequent visitors to. To the right, these are the top 10 equivalent in China. Let's show the websites in US. So Google, very minimalistic, a lot of breathing space, a lot of white spaces. This is Yahoo as of yesterday. Still a bit complicated, but still fine. Now, this is China. These six photos are screenshots of the websites, the top 10 visited websites in China. So, right at a glance, you see there's a big difference, right? Let's explore how global brands change the website according to locale. So to do this, I will go to Chrome. Okay, first, Starbucks. This is Starbucks USA. Because I'm lazy, I'll just use the other scroll. So, take it in. Microsoft doesn't really have Starbucks for you, but there's coffee out there. Okay, this is USA. Okay, now we look at the Chinese version of Starbucks. This is the China version. There's really nothing much to scroll here. It's just maybe two segments. That's it. And then this is the Japanese version. Same brand, same brand. Live website. Okay. You, you can't even scroll. There's no scrolling. Okay. Now let's look at KFC. This is KFC USA. It's not scrolling, but you can see big, large banners and there's even arrows telling you, please order now. Okay, now let's look at KFC China. This is KFC China. And lastly, KFC Japan, which is basically just text. Now, last example that I want to show is Honda. This is Honda Global, or rather Honda USA. Again, a lot of the uh, big hero banners, large images, clear call to actions. Very nice, very fancy, a lot of breathing space. Now we look to China. This is China. Each one of these is actually a link that you can click on. And lastly, Japan. It's basically a wall of text. Great. Now that we see the difference, you might start. Oh, where's the meme? Oh, okay. There's supposed to be a Jackie Chan meme saying, but why? But okay, it's missing. Just imagine it's there. So, what is the reason behind the differences? Let's dissect the differences first. Websites in the West big hero banners, a lot of large and clear call to actions asking you to do things, click on buttons, clear navigation structure, usually from top to bottom. Optimize for searching. When I say searching, think of a museum example. When you go to the museum, you know your way around the place. There will be arrows pointing that walk here, walk there, and then if you want to find a certain painting, there will be tour guides as well as very clear brochures to help you to find. Websites in the East is optimized for browsing. A lot of text, looks crowded and busy. More information than a search field and button. It's optimized for browsing. The analogy that I like to use is supermarket. Just imagine tons of options for you and they just expect you to browse around instead of knowing what you want. Ah, sorry, this, this is me, sorry. Yeah, but why? So, first reason, 
is because typing is hard. These two images show that how you should type Chinese. Chinese has a lot of intonation. So like uh, the same word in English alphabet can mean a lot of things, depends on how you pronounce it. For example, if you write Tatya, then they will show you a lot of candidate words that you can choose from. After you choose from, then only your characters will show. And to the right is how you will do it in mobile as well. It's a three-step process. Write in um, alphabets, English alphabets, choose the characters, wait for it to show up. Japanese is even worse because they have three writing systems, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. So first you need to understand whether you want to choose hiragana, katakana, and then select the kanji, and then show up. So as you can see, the mobile layout is also pretty complicated. It's much easier to use English with these 24 characters. So Bram Pitoyo, the design strategist at Mozilla, has this to say. Typing Chinese takes a lot of time, and finding the precise word isn't easy. So in that case, search sucks, optimized for browsing, to make life easier for the user. Number two is the nature of the language. Chinese and Japanese uses logographic characters in their writing system. You will need to know a minimum of 3,000 characters to read a newspaper. And there are no spaces between words. No capitalization. And this is some example. But for people who are familiar with the writing system, immediately when you look at this, you will see meaning. Whereas people who don't understand Chinese and character, they will just see painting or drawing. It's concise. Elephant is around nine characters, but in Japanese and Chinese, it's just one character. What this means is they can squeeze in a lot more copywriting in similar characters. If let's say your website constraint is you have a screen width of 767 pixels, and you can only input maybe 150 characters in. In English, 150 characters is just one sentence. In J Chinese and Japanese, you can put in two or even three sentences. To show you how concise is it, this is one of my favorite example. This is the actual word in Japanese. So it's a four character word, kuchi sabeshi. And what it means is, when you're not hungry, but you eat because your mouth is lonely. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Just how four characters can express so much. So just imagine how much they can express in terms of marketing. This is another example. To the left is Amazon, and to the right is Pintoto, a very popular website in China. They are not the same, but as you can see, in English, the characters takes a variable number of words. It can range from minimum of 5 to 15. But in Chinese, it's always just 2 or 3 characters max. Because of that, the copywriters have more leeway in terms of putting in more copywriting to convince the buyers to buy the product. Now, language is, in, in web especially, typography is a very complicated stuff. And during my research, I actually found a very good video to explain more about it. So if you're interested, you can watch this video about Hoi Ching. Red East was Miss West. Um, this video. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not being paid by Hoi Ching. It's not sponsored, but she can do that if he wants to. Yeah. But it's a very interesting video, really. So feel free to watch it if you have time. Now, third reason, culture. Remember in the first few slides, we mentioned that Japan is emotionally unexpressive and avoids confrontation, right? This is very true. I have a real anecdote when I went to Japan, if you buy a ticket to a train station and there's no more ticket, they will never say no to you. They will just say, kudasai, which means, please wait a while. And they will keep repeating it until you get it. Okay, they don't want me here. <laughs> so it's a culture that tries to say no, and, but because they don't say no, you don't know what's their true intention. Therefore, you need to convince them. And how do you convince them in web? Throw a lot of text to them. Tell them that, hey, this is really good for you, this is really good for your mom, this is good for your family, buy everything. Um, do take note that what I'm saying is specific to Japan. Um, I'm not so sure about China, but I'm sure 
culture has its own influence as well. The second thing is, Japan is a culture that discourages wastage. They don't throw anything. If you go to Japan, you won't find a rubbish bin in public spaces. In fact, you're expected to carry your own plastic bag and put your own rubbish in your own plastic bag and then throw it when you probably go back to your own home country or something. But the reason this is here is they really don't like wastage. And to them, white space is waste. Last but not least, it mimics the real life advertisement. So I'm about to show you two photos of Japan and how advertisement is done in the physical world in Japan. This is one in Shinjuku in the morning. And this is in uh, Kabukicho as well as Akihabara or someplace near. But as you can see, this is the way they were brought up. They are used to advertisement popping up in every facet of their face. Just go anywhere, even through the elevator, advertisements will be everywhere. And as such, the culture of advertisement permeates through the web design and carries over to the web. For us, people who are used to have a lot of breathing space, a lot of white, white space in between, we will think that it's cluttered, it's crowded, it's busy. But if you ask a Japanese native or even a native Chinese, right, they will say it's unnatural to not have all this text because I don't know if your product is worth buying. So this is perspective of local users. So now that we know the reasons behind why the websites are designed differently, let's take a look at the key takeaways that we can learn to help design better products. Number one, hire a diverse team. In my company, we have people from eight different nationalities. And I often find that their perspective is very interesting. The more people you have from different nationalities and countries, the more perspective you will have. And the diversity makes, makes for a better product. I, I remember one time when I was speaking to my Indian colleague, the MRT was delayed by 30 minutes. And as usual, you know, people start complaining, you know, start kapi kapu and stuff, stuff. But then my Indian colleague still just laughed. And then I asked him, are you not annoyed or frustrated because you know, it's late and you're gonna be late at work? And then he told me, like, dude, in my country, the train doesn't stop. The train sometimes delayed by two hours and the doors are not closed. And it's natural for them. So these are the things that we take for granted. We take for granted that Singapore has this amazing infrastructure that allows us to come to this nice, wonderful place and have pizzas. But the perspective from different nationalities uh, might differ. So it's really important to have a diverse team and listen from their perspective. Number two, always do user research. Do not assume that the, your requirement is the same as the requirement of your user. And the key here is local. If you are designing for a Japanese market, don't ask Singaporeans for, for their user research. It makes sense to go to where your local users eat and ask them to use your product, to test it without assisting them so that you get the most valuable data from them and those informations will help to make your product more useful for them. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>